Okay, good morning, everybody. Wonderful. Come on out here. This is Saturday morning. You have got Dr. Danita Edwards, the host of Disability in the Church Live, and we have the wonderful, phenomenal, amazing, come on, to Leah Flores. We want to share with you these guys, share with you, you guys today. And look, you have got to see that she is on the sunny beaches. Look, if nothing else, you better come out here and just wave at her as she's going to wave back from under that palm tree. So good morning, everybody. We are waiting for a few people to jump on. We have Salathio Payton in the house. Good to see you, Salathio. We have been missing you. I shared with Talia a few moments ago that we, Disability in the Church, have not been out here in three weeks. I know you thought we weren't coming back, <laughs> but we had to come back and we had to bring Miss Talia with us. So come on, jump on, say good morning so we can give you an official good morning to you. I was about to break out in one of my, my daycare songs <laughs> this morning. So yeah. Okay, so Lathiel said he was on the, the Zoom last Sunday. Look, my apologies, Salathiel. Um, last week, well, I'll share with you privately, but last week was a challenging week for us. And so we didn't come out there last week. All right, we got, got Blake in the house, Blake Edwards in the house. She Hi. said, I like the beach. <laughs> yeah, so as you come on, I know you guys have been enjoying our talks. You know, we do biblical accounts. We have firsthand testimonies and we're always challenging ourselves in the areas of faith and disability. We know you guys love it. What we need you to do, we need you to tag somebody. We need you to like it. We need you to share. We want you to go hard. We are gonna end up 2023 and people are gonna know that disability in the church live is shaking up some houses. So come on this morning. So we got Miss Cherish Ellison, good to see you. She put up the hearts out here, hearts right back to you. Yeah, oh, Salathio, he said he didn't see anybody on the line. Yeah, last week, Salathio, we didn't come out here. Uh, we didn't come on the Zoom, uh, but we're gonna be out here tomorrow. So let me just announce it. Since Salathio put us out there, on Sundays, Talia, we do a, a Bible study. Uh, for people with unique challenges is Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Anybody can join, but you have to have the Zoom link. So you have to contact me, whether it's through text, message me, you know, Facebook me, LinkedIn me, you know, however you want to contact me and I will send you the Zoom and we're talking about love and relationships. So just a wonderful, excellent topic. Yes. We've been talking about the Bible. You look, you think, you think your relationship is hard. You ought to take a look at some of these relationships in the Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, yes. We talked about, uh, we've talked about Solomon and his many wives were headed there. We talked about Samson and Delilah. Samson had three relationships. All, none of them worked. Yeah, none of them. <laughs> and we want to know why we're having trouble. So uh, those who want to join us who are fascinated, fascinated about love and relationships, I will give you that Zoom. You can share with us 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Sunday. And we're talking about Eastern time. OK, so look, let me go over here real quick. Miss Cherish has a comment and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, OK, Cherish, I like that. She said, this platform has been such an inspiration to me. She said, I've struggled for a little while in this area, but I am better today because of this platform. Thank you so much, Cherish. Lord, woo, that is powerful. I'm going to add, if it's okay, Cherish, I'm going to add your comment to my website. I hope it's okay. I'm going to add your comment to my website. Because I'm believing somebody needs to hear that this platform is working. And Lord, we, we just we don't bring just people with unique challenges out here. We bring out educators. We're going to bring some people who are tech savvy. We want to bring some psychologists. We talked about grief one time. 
We bought a grief counselor. So we're, we're, we're just getting the word out that God is responding to people with unique challenges. So Cherish said it's okay. Good morning, Minister Regina. Good morning. Good to see you out here. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and pray real quick, y'all. Oh, Blake said we look pretty today, Talia. Oh, thank you, Blake. Hi, Minister. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Look, and Cherish said in our inability is God's possibility. Yeah. Look, don't be surprised if I take that. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, we're going to pray because we're excited to, to get started. Y'all see Talia already smiling. She's already charged up and ready. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for a disability in the church live, God. And we just welcome your presence in. We say, have your way in our hearts today, Lord. If there's anything going on, whether it's a challenge physically, mentally, or emotionally, we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Touch us today, Talia and I, that we would be the mouthpiece that you use today, God. Lord, we pray that you would just speak to us so we can speak to your people. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started, y'all. Look, let me tell you a little bit about Miss Talia. She's going to come out here and look. When she tells you all of the things that she has been inspired to do, she is the young age of, oh, is it okay to tell your age? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because I, I know she just had a birthday last week, a couple of weeks ago. No, it was July 7th, right? Yes, July the 7th. I'm 20 Seven. and fabulous. Thank, thank the Lord. Thank you. She said 28 and fabulous. Yeah, she is the beautiful age of 28, but she has done so many things. You know, she would be that poster person who says, don't let your disability stop you, you know, sharpen your abilities. And that's what Miss Talia has done. Not only has she published numerous books of which she may talk a few about a few today, with some awesome topics, come on, topics that are relatable. She has been in the radio show industry. She's an awesome radio show personality. I mean, she is just a mover and a shaker. And not only does she do that in her career, but she's taking care of herself physically, mentally, emotionally. Come on, she is just an encouragement. And every time you talk to Talia, and she tells you the different things that she's doing, you'll, she's like a flower that's blossoming. It keeps opening and opening. And you're like, how many gifts does this woman have? <laughs> how many gifts does this woman have? But um, we want to introduce you to Talia and she's just gonna be a blessing to us. So Talia, go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks. They're ready for you. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I think you just took the words out of my mouth, <laughs> mouth yourself. But anyway, hi, my name's Talia. I'm a 28-year-old disability activist, published author, and radio show host personality. I was born with a condition called spastic diplegia that affects my left side, but it doesn't take away from my will and determination and my belief of Jesus Christ. You know, I was born at one pound, two ounces. Doctors told my mom I would never make it as I made my way up to heaven and Jesus sent me back. He's like, no, 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 it's not your time to come up here yet. So I'm going to send you back to earth, but I'm going to give you a challenge. And he gave me the beautiful gift of cerebral palsy. Mm. And that is why we're here today. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Talia. Look, Salathia said, take your time. <laughs> oh, Cherish said, wow. Wow. Yes. So uh, here's what I, I'm a paraphrase what Talia just said, that she is God's gift on the earth. Because she said, the Lord said, not so. You know, how many, how many know when God says, yes, it's going to be. So, wow. We just thank God for what he did. We thank you. Cause I know you had some praying parents too. I know your mom and dad are praying folks. So yes. wow. that is so excellent. All right, now. So we've got a few wows out here. So we want to talk to um, 
Miss Talia, I want to say uh, that Talia, I feel strongly that she is a person who has so many gifts, so many talents. And so she shared with me, you know, that it wasn't like her parents, you know, had these particular uh, gifts or focuses already, you know, like being in a radio show and, you know, just being a blogger and things like that. But I want to ask her, Talia, what got you started on writing? What is the story behind your stories? Well, what started you to write? Well, my story, how my journey with writing began, it all starts from a friend, a very special friendship I had when I was just three years old. I met a little boy at United Cerebral Palsy, New York, by the name of Daniel. Now, me and Daniel were like two peas in the pod. He was my best friend. He was wise beyond his years. Mm -hmm. But when I moved to Florida for many years, we had a lost touch. And in the beginning of the eighth grade, he had found me on MySpace. Thank God for MySpace. Anybody remember MySpace? Thank God for, for MySpace. And then a year after him and I reconnected, he gets diagnosed with cancer and then shortly after passes away. So with that, I was very angry at God. I said, you took my, you took my best friend away from me at just the age of 15. I didn't know where to go. I went through depression. And one day my dad decides, let me just take you to Barnes and Noble, get your mind off of it. And I remember the moment that I got the inspiration for James Ticking Time Bomb. I'm in the teen fiction section drinking a vanilla bean frappuccino. And it was like I had this, it was like God sent me this vision because I envisioned myself signing books, but I didn't know what kind of book. So I went home, I opened up uh, my Word document and I wrote, hey, see that kid over there? And that was the start of James Ticking Time Bomb. My mom comes in, she goes, I like that. If you keep writing the story, we'll publish it for you. And that was it. Wow, okay. And definitely, um, so out of a, a sad or, or disappointing or angry even place came the writing of your books. My gosh. Wow, yes. that's powerful. I'm I'm sad to hear, you know, what happened to your friend. However, I'm just happy that the Lord turned how you looked at it. The the writing became your prescription, you know, to get you get you through it. So was your first book about meeting the young boy or or was was it? it well, James Ticking Time Bomb is a little bit different from the person who inspired the story. It's about a young father who has his kid with cerebral palsy young, and he gets diagnosed with cancer, and he's trying to figure out what he wants to do before his time runs out. Oh, my gosh. That is a powerful thought there. And that is available on Amazon Kindle. And, um, well, after... I published James Ticking Time Bomb. I started to promote the book in multiple disability groups, but there was one problem. The book wasn't related to disability. And around this time, I was 17, 18 years old, and I was just tired of the misconceptions about cerebral palsy. Oh, people with cerebral palsy can't do this. People with cerebral palsy can't do that. So I started a Facebook page called Stomping on CP with Tylea, where I started blogging about my about my everyday life with cerebral palsy. And a few years later, during COVID, I published my first autobiography, Handy Capable, Stomping on the Barriers That Come My Way. Wow. Excellent. Wow. So now the first idea you said when you first started writing, you felt like the Lord gave you a vision because you saw yourself writing. How do you get inspiration for your other books? How do I get inspiration from my other books? Real life experiences and the lessons that the Lord has had to talk me. 
negative or positive, I'm going to write a book about it and I'm going to speak my truth because that's what God put me on this earth to do. Wow, that is powerful. Okay, so Lathia wants to know, Talia, how many books have you written? How many books have I written right now? I'm on 57. I hope to get to 60. Okay, now why do you why do you want to get to 60? I mean, you have is is that by the end of the year? Is that by next year? What's your why did, why did you choose 60? Because because I always want to motivate myself to write more books because every time I get a new experience or every time I meet someone new, it's always an inspiration, good or negative. So okay. I'm always on the go. I'm always writing, thinking. If I'm not writing, I'm thinking of writing. And if and if I'm in a bad mood, I'm thinking about what lesson, what lesson mm. did I learn from that situation in order for me to become a better writer and a better activist. I see. I see. Now, how how old were you when you started writing? How old would you say you were? I was 15 and then I got my first book published at 16. Okay, amazing. And your parents helped you publish your first book. Now, since then, I remember you said that you're no longer, like your parents don't have to uh, help you with the publishing now. So do you have a company or, now you don't have to share with us if you have a company, but is there uh, instructions or something you would share with us you know, as far as choosing a company, if somebody was out here who wrote a book and said, I need to publish. When choosing a company, you always want to look for the publishing company that would appreciate your writing and represent your type of writing and okay. respects it. Because I've been in situations where I've been in publishing companies and I've had to let them go because they mm. didn't appreciate my writing uh a few years ago and i'm gonna i'm gonna share this because this was god's lesson i i winded up well i wound up writing for a publication company and then when things went bad because they they said they owned the rights to my writing uh. but they weren't they weren't they weren't paying me for it so i had to fight to get the rights to my writing back mm. wow now that's a lesson for everybody because to be honest, Talia, I know a couple of people, at least one that I know of who was in that same situation, chose a company. And do you think it was, was it in the like the fine print that they didn't explain it? Or do you think that they just meant to deceive people by, you know, taking your, your rights to your book? Yeah, they they just tried to deceive me. And I believe it was Lucifer and the works trying to bring me down. But with God's strength, I said, no. -uh. All right. OK. All right. And she kept on going, y'all. So even though this happened and this does happen, we might have some people who are going to watch today who have tried to publish books or who have heard stories, negative stories. But based on what Talia is saying, Talia is saying, don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop the writer that's inside of you. Wow. Wow. Let me ask you, Talia, and I know some of these questions are just coming off the top of my head, but do you remember the first book that you wrote after that disappointment where the publisher let you down? Do you remember because I'm sure that that book is probably hot and on fire. <laughs> yes, that book is called I Love You in a Special Way. And it is a it is a romance uh, book about a teacher that falls in love with her student that is 21 years old, that is in the transitional program. Now, the reason why this teacher comes into the why Elizabeth comes into the school is because they deem Kane a troublemaking student that's in the transitional program and they just fall in love and he he he's nonverbal but he uses a speaking device to talk like a ACC okay my gosh device okay. to talk and i just after several drafts and after several edits i just published it this past year and it's been one of my favorite books and the story behind it is just phenomenal. Wow. Okay. So I hope y'all are listening today. We've got an author here that doesn't just do 
you know, stories, autobiographies about her own life. She does situations and circumstances and scenarios from all around her. Wow, that is powerful. That is powerful. Sometimes we think we can only write a certain type of book, but Talia is showing us that once you start writing, it flows. Wow. Okay. I, also, I also have a Christian devotionals book called Living My Disabled Life Through Christ available on Kindle. On Kindle. Okay. Now, somehow we've got to make sure we get those links to the folks today. Now, let me ask you, Talia, are you on Facebook now? Are you able to see? Because I was like, can you put it in the chat? If not, I can come back and make sure I get it in the chat. Those I think I think it'll be better that way because right now I'm like my screen is fully on Zoom. Okay. But I, no but I, love, I love everyone that's watching on Facebook. Great. Okay. No worries. No worries. Okay. So Salathiel's out here. Salathiel is really uh, inspired by your writing. He said I, he's never written a book before. What What would you tell Salathiel or anybody who's watching who's never written a book or think they don't have a story? Well, I would say everyone has a story. Just don't think about the word count. Just write. And remember, your first draft is going to be your worst draft, but Mm. That doesn't mean you can't get there. That's like my first draft was just horrendous. I look back at the stuff that I wrote when I was a teenager now, and I'm like, oh, why did you write this? But it, <laughs> it, it's it's a piece of re reflection and gratitude because it shows how much you've grown. If you keep, as I say, if you keep stomping and you keep going, you're going to get to where you want to achieve. You just got to have faith, trust, and believe in Christ. Okay. All right. So you hear that, Salatha, and we already know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. Well, we have definitely enjoyed her talking about being an author. That is amazing. And let me see. I got a couple of comments over here. Just folks saying that how awesome this is, you know, first time writers. And uh, Talia is like, when she looks back at some of her previous work, she said, what was I talking about? <laughs> but it must have been good because it got published and it got sold. So somebody needed to hear it. So let me see. We got a couple of comments over here. Let's see. Cherish says, uh, no one knows this, but for the last two or three years, I have ghost. I'm, I'm sure this is, she said, I've ghosted. So I'm ghost writing. I'm sure that she's talking about. She said, I love spoken word poetry. Wow. Do you do poetry, Miss Talia? Yes, I do. I have a few poems published on uh, spillworks.com for those of you who want to check my profile out. I've done poetry for many years. Wow. Okay. Look, y'all are just getting everything from Talia today. Look, I'm going to put at least her website. I'm putting that in the chat now so you guys can go find out for yourself what she is doing. And see, here's what I realized. My first book, um, to Leah, one of the reasons I was able to write that first book was because I was in a group with other ladies and one of the other ladies came out with her book and not to diminish her or anything like that, but it was something inside of me. When I saw that book that she had, I said, I can write a book. It almost seemed like if I touched it, I know her, I know her personally, you know, it, it wasn't like the author was way up here, you know, and I'm way down here. We were like equals. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could do this. So I hope that what you're saying to some folks today will inspire them because, you know, you're relatable. You're so personable. We feel like, you know, if she can do it, we can do it. Yeah. 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 And that's what it's all about. And that's the best part about my job. It, it's, it's not about the money. It's not about the likes I get on social media. It's the messages. It's the, it's yeah. the emails that I get from people saying that th this book inspired me to go about my life this way. And the ones that I get where people say you inspired me to write my book. Those are the ones that really touch me. And that's why stories are needed because, you know, we need to be someone else's survival guide. So wow. you go through obstacles and challenges 
but you may not realize that those obstacles one day will be the reason why you wrote your story and they will become someone else's survival guide. A survival guide. That's good. When we think of it like that, that's good. Look, I just tagged Nikki Tony because you, you know, I know Nikki Tony. Usually she's out here with us. But yeah. We haven't su- been out here in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, I'm surprised she hasn't texted me this morning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, I know. So I tagged her because her, her motto, her mantra is um, share your story because your story matters. It really does. It really, really, really does. And sometimes it's in what looks like the small details. It looks like it's in the small details sometimes. We want to hear testimonies, right? But sometimes I love the little small details that help me, you know, to build benchmarks to get where I need to go. I like the small details. So don't leave out details. All right, so I got a couple of comments out here. Let's see. Cherish says, uh, though I have dyslexia, I now love to write and read. She says she used to hate reading and writing. But she also has a question for you, Talia. Let me find her question. She says, if you had one thing to say to someone who is afraid to go after what God told them to do, what would it be and why? I would say... If, if you have that feeling in your heart that the Lord is guiding you there, you just got to go for it. Because in that case, he's trying to teach you a lesson. He's trying to show you a message. Like things may be scary in the beginning, but mm-hmm. once you get to that lesson and that reward of, oh my gosh, I did it. And oh, wait a minute. I finally learned why I was put in this situation. It's the best reward you can give yourself. The best reward you could give yourself is self-growth and self-love. Hmm. That is powerful. Look, I hope you are writing this down, y'all. I hope you, look, I hope, and, and look, and go back as Salathia said, you know, some people may miss this episode today, but you can also go back to YouTube. They can subscribe on my YouTube page. Yes, subscribe. And you can see some of, the Disability in the Church Live, some of the previous episodes, especially this one right here, because she is shooting out wisdom here. She is shooting out wisdom here. Wow, this is good. All right, so let me keep on going. Got a couple of other comments out here. So thank you, Salathiel. Thank you, Cherish. So Salathiel is talking about my first book, The Man You're Trying to Marry is Not Your Husband. Well, I'm not going to talk about that today, Salathiel, but that was based on life experience. Salathiel already knows that. I talked about that book before life experience brought me to write that book so the chair says she wants to get into contact with you that's okay um okay oh okay she wants to tell her story god that god is good good. any any talia we've been quiet too long we have lost who we were because people put that big disabled sign up how many times, and I'm just thinking about my own situations, but how many times have we sat quietly in a room and we've had something to say, but nobody looked in our direction, nobody communicated with us, nobody asked us what we were thinking, but now we're out of the box now. What do you think about that, Talia? Have you ever uh, been somewhere? Yes, all, yes. The, all the time, especially when I go to the doctor's doctors when I meet new specialists and they're like well this is the worst case of cerebral palsy I've seen I said I said excuse me ma'am but um if this is the worst case of cerebral palsy you've seen may God bless you and by the way you should check out my books on Amazon Mm. and I've been in situations where I'll be with my mom and then They'll ask her the questions and I'll answer them. And they look at me like I'm some alien or something. I said, yes, this is God's miracle. It's working. Yeah. Like, for example, when I go to my doctor's Uh office now, they're like, hold on to the answer. Hold on. Hold on a second. Natasha's going to get me because... Natasha Mason told me to stop hitting buttons when I'm out here on 
<laughs> when I'm out here on my disability and I'm always trying to hit likes and things. So let's see. I hope people are still with us. Let me make sure. Y'all still with us? Yeah, they're still with, with us. The live is still on. Okay. All right. Because I thought I lost somebody when I hit. I tried to hit like, y'all. I'm going to stop messing with buttons. I'm, yeah. Natasha, where, stop. Where was I? <laughs> In the doctor's office, how you tell them, you know, and here, check out my book. In the doctor's office, I told them that, and within the next week, because, you know, sometimes I need a little bit of extra help, too, because I have ADHD and other great blessings that I that I take into court. It gets to the point where the doctors even ask me, when's the next book coming out? Because we just love this last one. Wow. Okay, so your doctor is supporting you now. All of them. <laughs> it's the greatest thing. She said it's the greatest thing. Yeah. Now, can you imagine, y'all? Can you imagine people looking at you last year? Can you imagine looking at you last year and saying, oh, I'm so sorry you have a, 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 a disability. I'm so sorry. And then you come out and say, bam, here's my book. <laughs> and they're like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, that is good. So let's see. Cher says, she said, I love the fact that you phrase them as blessings and not curses. Can you share how you were able to do that? That you see well, them as a blessing? Go ahead. Well, well, that took me some time. Like anything, we all have to go through a self-love journey. That's anyone in life, okay. disabled or non-disabled. But I think writing has helped me see my disabilities as a blessing. See, if it wasn't for me being the 15-year-old girl that had braces and had round Harry Potter-like glasses that didn't love herself, I don't mm. think I would be the person I am today. If mm. it wasn't for the 15-year-old girl that was overcome with grief and depression, I don't think I would have been the writer I am today. And I don't think I would have been able to love myself like I do today. So in a way, writing has saved my life and it has given me purpose, but I also have to thank the Lord for guiding me through the storm because he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I may not have known, but he knew. That's good. That is so encouraging. Yeah, we love it. I hope, I hope that answered your, your question, Cherish, about her being able to see it as a blessing, you know, and let me, let me acknowledge and apologize for so many of us who have all ability, who just have not said the right things, we have not done the right things. Many times we've had a, a, a low expectation. We have had a perception that was so wrong and unfocused. And I, I want to apologize for us who had hard hearts and couldn't or didn't or wouldn't help people who have unique abilities. But now that we know, somebody once said, now that you know better, you're gonna do better. So now that we know better, we're gonna do better. We're gonna do better. Okay, so let's see, Cherish got a couple. Look, Cherish is enjoying this today. Look, Salathia said, yep, you gotta have self-love. You gotta have self-love. And look, you got Cherish talking about superpowers. She tells people it's not a disability, it's a superpower. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to stop right here. Are there any other questions before we keep moving on? I want to make sure that as we're hearing, you know, uh, these, these testimonies, as we hear in Talia, as we're watching her on the sunny beaches of an island, <laughs> I want to make sure that if you have any questions now, go ahead and post them in the chat. It's, it's never too early to post a question. There's no small or too big question. You know, let me put this out here. I remember one time I did a, a workshop on unique challenges. And the lady told me, one of the ladies who, um, uh, I'm just going to say her relative or her, her child had, um, like, had been diagnosed with ADHD. So she told me the biggest thing that she had, biggest concern she had was saying the wrong thing. That was her, her big concern. She didn't want to, you know, uh, speak down, 
you know, to the relative with ADHD. She wanted to remain positive. Talia, can you share with us, are there any um, situations or are there any phrases or are there any words that we should just take out of our vocabulary or any things that we should not do that you have found that have been offensive, but we really didn't mean to offend. Can you think of anything that crosses your mind that something is important to you that we should put it in our, you know, our remembrance? Well, don't stare at us. Just come up to us and say hello. Okay. And speak to us as if we're at the appropriate age level that we are. Okay. A lot of the times I don't get offended. I just educate. The thing is, what I learned with advocacy, with anything, you, you have to educate. You don't get offended. You educate. So a lot of the times I get people that talk to me as if I'm a baby. And then okay. I express, hey, I don't like that. Because just because I have a disability doesn't mean I don't understand what's going on. I understand fully what's going on. And it's the same with nonverbal people. Another mm -hmm. thing I don't like is when people say, oh, well, you're disabled, so you can't do this or you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Take out the word can't out of your vocabulary because you can pretty much do what everybody else does just in a different way. We all have to adjust. We all have to adapt and we all have the power to do that. It's what you do with your life that defines you. Like I wrote on my Facebook the other night, obstacles are not meant to hinder you. They're meant to help you grow and prosper. Mm. Wow. Excellent. Excellent wisdom. So I, I'm encouraged by that to have these age appropriate conversations, not talking to you like you're a little child uh, to say hello, to, to please don't stare and to don't say what we can't do. Yeah, because that unfortunately that has been a common theme in our culture because we just didn't know. We just didn't know. OK, so let's see. I uh, got a couple of comments over here. Cherish wants to know now. Um, she wants to know about a podcast. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? So, can you talk a little bit about your? Go ahead. Well, well, funny thing that you say that because I do have a podcast that airs on Asheville FM called the Stomping on Cerebral Palsy Radio Show. Let me give you a little bit of background on that. Now, way before I was an author. Okay. At the age of 14, I developed a hobby for radio. Okay. After listening to some of my favorite radio DJs on Kiss Country FM in Fort Lauderdale and okay. Radio Disney, me and my other best friend, Christopher Walsh, who happens to be a phenomenal DJ with cerebral palsy, and he is nonverbal. Check okay. him out on Facebook if you guys want to check him out. He got me into online radio so every time I would go over to his house on the weekends, we would broadcast live okay. on an application called Blip FM. And I did radio on and off, whether it was doing live broadcast or just DJ mixes. I have an old SoundCloud under the name DJ T Flow for those of you who want to check out my cringy uh, dubstep mixes. But yeah, I, I I did that for a few years on and off. And then after I found my passion for writing, it stopped. And then I found it stomping on CP at 18. And then at 21 years old, I had gotten the opportunity to turn what I was writing about into a show mm. at, a radio, at an online radio station in Virginia, ironically. So I was there for a few years. But during COVID, me and the station manager got into a little bit of a disagreement because they didn't, didn't agree with my message and they didn't like the fact that I was airing country music instead of their preferred music. Oh, okay. So after that dispute, I was, I was discouraged. I was frustrated. I was like, you know, I spent hours on in at this radio station trying to build a network, staying up till 2 a.m. And 
my work as a radio DJ is not going to be appreciated. Well, <laughs> during COVID, I connected with my good friend Priya Ray, who started a nonprofit organization called DYA World, and she was like, "Let me connect you with my friends at Asheville FM. Okay. They've been look they've been looking for someone to do a segment based on." on disability and they couldn't find anybody so then she connects me with dr hyena um love him to death and mm -hmm. he started he, he said send me a send me a demo tape of your show and from there it, the stomping on cp radio show has taken off on mm -hmm. Asheville fm and now we're on our fourth season all right okay cherish i hope you got all of that that was a mouthful of inspiration. I hope you got it. And look, please go to her website. Please go to taliaflores.com. Take a look at what she is doing. I mean, look how the Lord, now, now let me say, first of all, Talia had to keep her in initiative. She had to take some initiative in some of these situations. It wasn't just stuff just landed at her door. So she had to take initiative when people started wanting to connect her with other people, she had to follow and connect the dots. So maybe one thing we need to pray is that the Lord would put people in our path who see, come on, that, that see the things that are, are we're working on and the gifts that we have and that there can be an exchange you know, of conversations because it, do, it doesn't just all the time fall at your, your door. Sometimes you have, to, you, you have to pursue it. You have to run for it, okay? And so Talia said they're in their fourth season now. We're gonna make sure we get that out to you guys. Selective said, that's good. He, he said, OMG. It's so true. Because we know, was it any, any point that you were ever afraid, Talia? Was it any point that you were ever scared to take that next step? When it came to radio, yes, because after you get basically fired from a radio station, it's like, you're discouraged. But at that point in time, I realized that the day that radio station in Virginia fired me, I realized that I couldn't be discouraged. I'm like, there's gonna there's gonna be someone that believes in my message and with Asheville FM, they're like family and I just soared with them. So with that, I I just I just have to give thanks to like everybody at Asheville FM and the former station for molding me into the radio show personality I am today because without their obstacle that they threw at me, I wouldn't be the radio DJ I am today. Okay. I wouldn't be DJ Ty. So with that, I thank you. And I thank my best friend, Christopher Walsh. All right. Go, Christopher. Go, Christopher. All right. So they call you DJ Ty. Y'all hear that? Yeah, DJ Ty. Okay. We might have some other folks who are thinking about doing poetry or just uh, making a lifestyle change and just looking at other careers and things to do. Let me say... I know when uh, my daughter was in school, some of the things that they asked her, like when they got ready to, you know, help find her a, a job, they would ask her some of the things that she liked. And so when she said fashion, the first thing that entered their mind to Leah was to, um, you know, get her working at TJ Maxx and get her, you know, working at, you know, stores, Ross's and things like that. It is so funny how sometimes people can hear our dream and they interpret it as something different. No one would ever have known that Blake's desire to be fashion, you know, to, to be in the fashion world would have been modeling. So we, we need to pray that the right people come into our path and that they hear our heart because Blake, all she knew was to say, I like fashion. I wanna be a fashion designer. But it wasn't until years later to Leah that we realized that her gift was actually in modeling. It is in acting. It is in drama, you know, which is a part of fashion. But when, when she was in school, the job coaches were thinking. And I mean, it's, it's no fault of their own. They were just limited in their thinking. 
you know, yes. what it meant for fashion. So yeah, we thank people like Chris Walsh who helped you. You about to say something? Yes, and I was gonna say, um, I had to leave public school in the 10th grade because my high school in particular wanted me to be on a special diploma and they wanted to keep me in school till I was 22 due to money. And I'm not saying anything wrong against the special diploma. I think it's great for some kids, for some students with disabilities, but not for all. And I think that's the issues with these public schools and these and these job coaches is that when they see someone with a disability, they automatically want to downgrade them or put them in careers that mm -hmm. are just going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. They're not realistic. Yeah, not realistic. And, you know, that's what I talk about in my book, From Disabled Student to Disability Activist. All my experiences through the public school system, all the, all the struggles that I had to go through, because I went through a lot of struggles. And those same teachers that didn't believe in me fo follow me on social media to this day. I, the only good experience I had in public school was meeting my middle school teachers, Ms. Van Horn, Ms. Trichler, Ms. Williams, those were the three teachers that really made an impact on my life, especially Ms. Van Horn. She's in my first book as a character. So. Hey, man. Wow. Okay. Do so you know what? And, and I always say this every week to Leah, every time I talk on this disability in the church live, I believe one that we're giving out nuggets that people really needed to hear so that they can, they can believe in themselves again. So what basically I heard you say and kind of what I was saying myself is about the school system. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that they're bad, but I am saying that they have a, a list of core classes. They have a list of a regiment that they have to follow, whether you have unique challenges or not. And sometimes it doesn't actually look at the gifts that God has placed inside of you. So we really need teachers, like you said, Miss Van Horn and, and other ones who can hear our heart. And even if we're nonverbal, they can tell by the smile on our face what it is that we enjoy to do. Look, my, my, my um, grandson, he's one year old. I can tell whether he likes corn or likes, to, uh, you know, uh, carrots. It's because when I give him the corn, he puts the hand up, you know, like, you know, I don't want that. You know, sometimes exactly. we have to listen to that. Right. But when I give him the carrots, I mean, he is just, he's smiling. He eats some, he loves it, you know, and uh, we've got to stop pretending. Let me speak to some folks who pretending like you like to do something when you really don't. I, I think I've said something right there. Stop pretending that we like something when we really don't, okay? So we got a couple other people who have joined us this morning. My mentor, <clears throat> Reverend Myrna Brown, she's out here. She says, good morning to us. Good to see you, Reverend Myrna. I see Nikki Tony is out here. Hey. She has, yeah, she's like, hey. And she has a comment that I'm gonna share that. And I also see Monique Dwell is out here. Now, somebody, oh, hey, Monique. Hi. Hey. Everybody knows Mo. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you met Monique in person? Yes. We, no, not in person, but we worked together behind the scenes. She ah. actually connected her with one of my illustrators. I love her in Jeremiah. She's great. Wow. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right, Miss Moni. Miss Moni. How do you pronounce it? I think she says Moni. What is your podcast? Moni. Is it? What what is her pod? The name of her podcast is a moment with Moni. A moment with Monique. Yes, yes, good, good, good. So she's out here. She said, "Hey, fam. Look, I know Selected was glad to see her. So Selected is saying good morning to everybody. Now Nikki Tony. Now Nikki Tony. We're only going to talk about uh, this for a quick second. She put a comment out here because we're almost at the end of time. And so Nikki Tony has a thought about the IEP. She said, I hate, and for those who may not know, is the individualized education plan. Nikki says she hates those. Um, Talia, did you have an IEP when you were, go ahead and say something to that. 
Yes, I did. And I used to love going to the IEP meetings because the school, I'm going to tell you guys a little story real quick. Back when I was in the ninth grade and my high school was up to their shenanigans wanting me to be in high school till I was 22, I had to take something called the IQ test and the DAR testing. And when the psychiatrist came back and read the results, it was ridiculous. The psychiatrist had the nerve to say I had short-term memory loss. I had long-term memory loss and I wasn't smart. I was basically uh, on the borderline of um, below and there was no hope for me. So what my mother does, my mother Lisette, which I have to give her a shout out because she's always been like my biggest advocate. What she does is she has the ESC specialist call me from from the class and they're like, Miss Flores, I don't think you want to do that. And my mom's like, yes, I do. She And then they call me in and my mom goes, Tylea, who's that? I go, Miss so-and-so. And then my mom asks me again, who's that? Who's that? And I go around and my mom starts asking questions about my life and the school psychiatrist, um, when she didn't have a nice appearance, she mm-hmm. looks at me, she she looks at me as if she's appalled. And my mom goes, I want my daughter withdrawn from the school right now. She's going to graduate on a regular diploma and she's going to be something out of herself. And you guys are going to see. And they're like, Miss Flores, I doubt Tylee is going to graduate on a high school diploma. Well, mm-hmm. fast forward two years later, I graduated through Florida virtual school on a standard diploma, got standing o- ovation at my high school graduation published my first book before graduating high school guess what I did the day after graduation oh my goodness (laughs) I went back to that school with copies of my actual diploma and we gave it to each of those people and we gave them a copy of my first book oh my gosh (laughs) and guess guess what I wrote in that first book no (laughs) <laughs> Miss so and so, thanks for not believing me, Tylea Flores. My gosh. Well, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Look, Nikki Tony probably liked that story right there because uh, hey. she shared uh, some of her situation. Now, we don't have time to talk about the education, but I love how this topic is coming up because we need to come back and dig deep into the uh, individualized education plans. You know, we could do a whole segment on the benefits and the, you know, the pros and the cons of the IEP and how much uh, influence a participant and a parent can have on the committee's um, recommendations. Sometimes we go in there, Talia, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I went in there and I thought, you know, these are educated people. You know, they have the college diplomas. They know what they're talking about. So, you know, oh, but your mom, thank you for her just advocating for you. My gosh, I see where you get that spunky personality. Your mom like, nope, not so. Bring my daughter in here right now. (laughs) And then here's the crazy thing. Now the psychiatrists and all those people that didn't believe in me, they all follow me on social media. They all listen to my show. They all buy my books. And it's just the best karma ever. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And you know what Talia did, y'all? She 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 bought her respect. She was like, mm-mm, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find oh, out what it means, what it means to, me. to me. Yeah, she did, didn't she? A Whoa. Reason. That's what we have to do. You know, and I'm thinking about some of the young kids who are in school now. And, you know, parents kind of go through those IEP committee meetings and um, numb. They're just numb, you know, just trying to figure out what do I do next? And they see disability. They don't see it as a blessing. They see it as a a regimen or they see it as a burden. But people like Talia, who stayed focused on what she knew God was telling her to do, have helped people come out of bondage, have helped people not to have the baggage that they're carrying when they go into those meetings and when they go about their daily life. This is so encouraging. All right, let's see if we got any more comments out here. Now, y'all, we're at the last minute or so. I want to ask just one last time, are there any questions? 
And then if there are not any questions, I'm just going to get to Leah to maybe share one, you know, final thought with us. And then I'm going to have her to pray for us. I am so glad that she accepted when I said, you know, would you like to, to pray for our folks today? And she said, yes. So let me look over here. Are there any questions? You know what? I just want to say that whatever it is that you're trying to do is doable. It is doable. You're, you're feeling like, you know, there's, there's, there's something I need to work on, or there's something I need to be a part of. Ask us, ask some folks around you, ask your church, ask your family to help you get there. Lord. Oh, Reverend Myrna says she's an advocate for her great grandson. She said, yes, they will classify our children as, oh, is Minister Regina out here? There, there's a word to Leah for those of us who are 50 and above. I, yeah, I'm 50 and above. There, there's a word that they used to call people who had unique challenges back in the 60s. Oh, I know where this is going. I, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna say this one word because it's in the chat. Y'all, I'm only gonna say it. She you know, said this is the word my um um minister Regina was trying to remember last week. It was two words they used to use. Cover your ears if you don't want to hear this, but retarded. they used to use the R word for retarded, and they used to use the M word for moron. So Reverend Myrna put it in the chat. She said they will classify children as morons parents must be active i yes. can't say that enough yes and that's another thing too like now I, I i get emails from parents like i i have this one girl that i do a podcast with on the tv show dawson's creek it's called diving into the creek and that's available on spotify as well and uh, she has two kids with special needs and, and she's a single mother and she's trying to navigate through Florida's school system because it's just terrible. But I've been able to help her based on my experience and that, that has been a blessing. But I agree, parents need to get on it. They need to start teaching. They need to start teaching educators the proper wording. They need to, yeah. if, if you see a teacher that's ableist, you need to speak out on it and you need to, you need to you need to make sure that they are no longer in that position. Like when I was seven years old, um, my bus driver was beating up the nonverbal kids, and mm -hmm. I spoke up for those kids, and I wound up get getting smacked by my bus driver. Oh my gosh! Luckily, there was cameras on the bus, but you know she was fired and removed. But I'll do it over again. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I'm so sorry that happens and uh, it happens. Well, you know what? We're going to get into a whole nother segment now when we talk about, uh, you know, oh Lord, erase that last comment because I don't want to go in on that. Uh, yeah, no, Lord. Educators that don't, we're we'll not going to talk about today. We'll be here we'll for be another educated. three hours. We <laughs> would because it's such a good topic, but, but, but parents have got to be proactive. You've got to ask more questions. You know, we've got to, of course, not be in denial. We've got to listen to what the teachers are saying to us, but then go home and process it. Take time to process it. And if you are a prayer person, fight in the spirit. I don't want to go here, but I'm going. Fight in the spirit for what you know. Uh, you know what? We're going to have to, you know what? I didn't build a whole nother. Talia, I got a whole nother uh, uh, segment that we're going to do. But look, let me just say this one last thing about Talia. Talia is coming back to us. And I was looking for my um, a flyer that I put out here a couple of weeks ago. We're having Authors Unite. Authors Unite. We're going to have eight authors come out here. It's going to be Natasha Mason. It's going to be Sadie Washington. It's going to be Miss Monique Dwell. It's going to be Coach Latria Russ. It's going to be Chantel Solomon. It's going to be Talia Flores. It's going to be Blake Edwards. And it's going to be Miss Alicia Brown. Now we're coming out here. That's going to be September the 23rd. We're talking about female authors unite. All of these women are just uh, experts in their field. We're going to talk about getting the word out about their books and about their ministries. 
specifically as it, as it relates to being an author. So now we're going to have that coming up. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. But we got that coming up September 23rd. Now we're building right here. Disability in the church is building a foundation so that we can take it back to our churches. We can take it back to our fields. We can take it back to our places of employment. And if it's not right, we got to go in and say, this is not right. This ain't right. And we got to go about getting it right. Look, Reverend Myrna said, yeah, fight in the spirit. That's all. God help me. Monique, I'm going to call you for that one. That's a woman who can pray. That woman prays with power. We need to come out here on a disability in the church live. And we need to pray, not in theory, but we need to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the word. Some of these things that we are discovering that are happening to our children, they're being uh, held back on their natural diplomas, like uh, Talia said, but don't get me started. I didn't get on my soapbox. I got up there. All right. So Talia, I'm going to ask you if you would just take a moment or two to pray for us. We're already past the 11 o'clock hour, but I'm not going to slow you down. I'm not going to hinder you however you feel to pray for us. And then we're just going to close out and I'm going to thank everybody, you know, for sharing with us. This has been just awesome. I feel the Holy Ghost. But uh, <laughs> Talia, if you can pray for us, that would be wonderful. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the opportunities you have given us to come together in the in the Church of Disability and speak our truth. I thank you for your words of encouragement. I ask that you encourage those that feel discouraged. And I ask that all of us, Lord, continue to inspire the world, to continue to see the world as a beautiful place for those with disabilities and inclusion. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, my Lord. So thank you all for joining us today. Talia, let me ask this question. Um, usually I ask our folks, if someone wanted to sow a seed into you because you are good ground, do you have, you don't have to share it, but do you have a cash app or a way that they can contact you? Or should they message you on Facebook? How do you feel more comfortable if well, they, if they I, wanted to? Well, I have a PayPal and you can PayPal me at me at tyliaflores.com. Okay. So is that, uh, let me make sure. Okay, so me, like M-E, uh -huh. at Talia Flores, and I put it in the chat, dot com, uh -huh. so I can PayPal. Okay. And then my website, uh, you can just go to my website and click bookshop if you wanted to wow. buy okay. my books and see all the greatness I got going on there. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Good. So you can purchase one of her books, amazing books out here. She says she's above 50 now. Wow. All right. Okay. And I did share your Talia Flores in the website. I shared that out there too. Praise God. All right. Okay. So there's a way that we can give back to Talia. Uh, so thank you so much for that. I'm also encouraging or asking if anybody would like to sew or tithe or uh, you know, uh, meet a need through Disability in the Church, which is Birthright Kingdom Deliverance Ministries. You can also hit me up. You can message me or you can uh, cash at me as well. I want to thank those folks who helped Blake and I to go to, and we're going to do an episode about uh, her Miss Amazing pageant and what the Lord has done through that. Lord, okay, we got to stop now, but uh, we're going to come back out here in next week and you can join us as well. But thank you so much, every single person for joining us. If I missed your comment, I will go back and see that again. And I will comment there. And I'll also be putting some other things out about events that we have coming up. All right. So we love you so much. Thank you again, Miss Talia. We have had so much joy with you today. Thank you for sharing with us. And so we'll see you again in September. But until then, if you need me, reach out. I'm right here. Okay. For sure. All right. And be sure to like my Facebook page, Stomping on Cerebral Palsy with Tylea, for more updates on me. And God bless everyone. God bless y'all. All right, y'all, go about and enjoy your Saturday. We love you. From Dr. Danita and Disability in the Church Live, have a wonderful day.